Christians, if we want to understand Monday Thursday, it's helpful to first understand the Passover. Because what God did 1,400 years before Jesus sat in his disciples in that upper room is critical to help us to understand not only about what is happening tonight, about the meaning of Monday Thursday, but also about the meaning of Good Friday. Because Jesus, as Paul says, is our Passover lamb. And so in the book of Exodus, when we meet God here in this reading, God wants to make a point to Egypt, to make something abundantly clear to Pharaoh. God was not going to just deliver his people out of Egypt, just like that, although he could have done it if he wanted to. God was also going to show that Egypt would not be able to stop him from doing it. That Pharaoh could try as hard as he wanted, but he would not stop God from carrying out his plan. And also their gods were powerless to stop God as well. God was in control here, and nothing was going to get in his way. Not Pharaoh, not their gods, no one. And so to make that point then, God sent the plagues upon Egypt to show his power to Pharaoh and to all of Egypt. And through these signs and wonders, with an outstretched arm and with a mighty hand, God would bring his people out of Egypt and bring them to the promised land. But no plague made this point more clearly, Christians, than the tenth and the last point, the one that we are focused on for this evening, and that was the death of all of the firstborn of Egypt. In one single night, God was going to strike down all the firstborn in the land. As we, as we hear in Exodus chapter 11, every firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the slave girl who is behind the handmill, and all the firstborn of the cattle. There would be no exceptions. Didn't matter if you were on the top of society, didn't matter if you were all the way at the bottom. Even the firstborn of the animals would die. Because nothing was going to escape his wrath on that night. Could there, is it possible to think of a better and a stronger way to show the weakness of Egypt? They were powerless to stop the Lord from doing this. God would carry it out. And the firstborn in particular were struck down because in the Bible, the firstborn is a sign of a man's strength. Jacob, for example, in Genesis chapter 49 says about Reuben, his firstborn, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, and the firstfruits of my strength, preeminent in dignity and preeminent in power. So Jacob's strength then, the sign that he was in his full manhood, was his firstborn son, Reuben. So cutting off the firstborn of Egypt then would mean cutting off their strength. It would show them for just how weak they actually were. And it would show also the weakness of their gods. Because where were their gods when the Lord passed through the land on that night? God was about to show to Egypt and to Pharaoh his mighty power, and to show that he alone is the Lord. But Christians, there was a problem for Israel in all of this. Because the plague was going to go through the entire land of Egypt. It wasn't going to make any distinctions. High and low, even the animals would all be struck down. Because God was pouring out his wrath against sin. Yes, it was especially against Egypt for the way that they had treated his people. But it's not like Israel was innocent either. Israel, after all, had fallen into idolatry, even in the land of Egypt. I mean, just look at Mount Sinai when they make the golden calf. Have you ever wondered why they pick a calf of all things 
It's because it was, a, it was the shade of one of the Egyptian gods. They were worshiping false gods in Egypt. So they didn't deserve to be delivered because they were somehow so righteous. It's not like they were the best people ever and they were being unjustly oppressed. If God had not, if God had not given them a way out, they would have received this judgment too. And they would have deserved it because of their sins. But the reason why God was going to save them Christians was because of the promises that he had made. The promise to Abraham that he would become the father of many nations. The promise that a seed would be born in whom all the nations of the earth would be blessed. And so God on that night gave them a way of escape. He gave them a way out so that they could flee from the wrath to come. And that's what we see happening in our Old Testament reading. Because God tells Israel in Exodus chapter 12, before the day of judgment came, that they were supposed to take a lamb, one for each household, gathering, you know, joining together if they weren't big enough to, to eat a lamb all on their own. But it couldn't be just any lamb. He says in verse 5, Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Being without blemish means that it couldn't have any physical defects. It's not like they could use just whatever lamb they happen to have, and it's not like they could use a lamb they were going to get rid of anyway. They had to give the very best to the Lord on this occasion. And yes, I know that we think of a lamb as coming from a sheep, and so it might confuse us when it says that it can come from a sheep or a goat. But the word in Hebrew is actually the same for both. They don't make any distinction between them. So that, so whether it was a sheep or whether it was a goat didn't actually matter all that much. But what did matter was what they did with it. Four days later, they were supposed to take that lamb and to kill it at twilight. And they would take the blood and to put it on the doorposts of the house where they were staying, and also on the lintel. And then they had to make haste. They had to roast the lamb, God said, whole. They wouldn't even have time to dress it. And they were supposed to eat that lamb dressed as if they were going to go out the door right afterwards, as if they were going to go on a journey right after they got done eating. Because that was the whole point. God was coming quickly. There would not be time for anything else. They wouldn't even have time to boil water to cook it that way. That's how quickly the Lord would come. They needed to be ready for what was going to happen. But in this way, God gave them a way of escape. Their firstborn would not be struck down. <coughs> because God would see the blood of that lamb on the door of the house. And God would pass over them. Judgment would not fall upon them because of that blood. A substitute had been provided. More than that, Christians, God also brought them out of Egypt on that same night. He delivered them out of the house of slavery entirely, so that as they left Egypt that night, they not only escaped a great plague, but found a new life one in accordance with the promises of God. But Passover was not just something for one time only. God wanted them to remember this year after year, for every year to come. They were to recall what God had done for them in Egypt, to remember the mercies that he had shown them, and to remember everything that he had done. But God did not do this only because of, the, you know, just for the sake of memory, as if we were just reminiscing on days gone by. This also was meant to teach Israel, to point something towards something that was to come. Because God, through this, was teaching them of a greater exodus, one where he would deliver them from the slavery of sin. And this greater exodus, Christians, came in our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Because the day that Jesus died was no accident. Good Friday was the day of Passover, just like all the Gospels tell us. Jesus died on the very same day that Israel was brought out of Egypt by God. And this is why Jesus is called the Lamb of God in the New Testament. Jesus is our Passover Lamb. Jesus shed his blood so that God would pass over us too. Not just right now to escape a plague, but on the very last day, when God will pour out all of his wrath for the very last time. But when God sees his, the blood of his Son on us, and when we trust in Jesus Christ by faith, we will be delivered from that judgment. We will be brought out just like Israel was so long ago. We will be covered with the blood of Jesus and enter into the greater promised land. And in this we also see the point of Monday Thursday Christians. Because Monday Thursday happened the night before Jesus died. This was the same time when all the Passover lambs were being sacrificed. In fact, the Lord's Supper probably started at twilight. But Jesus gives us his own body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. His blood has been poured out for us. He has covered the doorposts of our hearts so that those who receive this sacrament in true faith will find here salvation and life. Passover looked forward to the suffering and death of Jesus, who is our Passover lamb. And the Lord's Supper, which we are receiving here tonight, brings us that very blood today. In this sacrament, we find new life in him because of what he has done. In this sacrament, we are joined with Jesus, who is our promised land. So Christians, let us make haste tonight, like Israel did so long ago. Let us hurry to come to the table to receive the blood of our Lamb. Let us hurry to come to Jesus to, so that we might escape from the wrath to come. Let us hurry to turn away from our sins and to turn toward our gracious Lord. Because as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 5, Christ our Passover Lamb has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Let us pray. Holy Father, who has given your Son, Jesus Christ, as our Passover Lamb for the forgiveness of our sins, lead us to receive him in true faith and to come to your table with repentant hearts, so that we may find in him the way to everlasting life. In his name we pray. Amen.